Hello guys, this is Svetlana from Comic Cosplay and as you know, I absolutely love putting LEDs into all of my costumes and I'm actually using for that like this little circuit here and it basically like I can flip one switch and then the animation change from blinky lights to crawling or to static light which is really nice and like pretty cool to show off and well in addition the best part is that I'm actually using the same circuit for all of my project so it's basically jumps from one costume to the next and I'm saving a lot of time a lot of money and uh, yeah and I even use the same code for pretty much all of my projects and because of that I thought I'm going to show you how to build this thing yourself the topic is a tiny little bit advanced though so if you need any help in general with LEDs check out both of my LED books like this one for example is for static lights and this one is for fancy animated grid smash lights so uh, well if you need any help and like any support or anything check out these books on kamwecosplay.com and now let's start with the video if you followed my work for a while you probably still remember my first large led project it was the protoss wizard costume that i made back in 2013 and even won the blizzcon costume contest with it yeah i'm still super proud of that this costume had a simple pulsing animation, but already worked with a single circuit and a central power source. After that, the whole setup became more compact, more powerful and easier to adjust. For Shadowmon, my second big LED project, I used a rechargeable LiPo battery that I permanently installed into my prop. The circuit itself was hidden inside one of the demon skulls. This way I could charge the LiPo and adjust the code. The result had light up runes, glowing eyes and a crawling animation with translucent blades. Well, and after this I continued to use the same setup for my gauze rifle from Fallout 4. As you can see it had steady lit up numbers, but also blue canisters with a crawling animation. The circuit here was hidden in a 3D printed container and the power source was placed under the blue cover. Well, and my Tsunogre dual blades then finally got four different animations, like blue crawling or red pulsing. The power source and chip here was hidden inside the detachable blade. So how does this all work? Well, I'm gonna show you now. My current setup consists out of a Trinket Pro 5 volt and a LiPo backpack. I also use three slide switches in total, a few server extension cables with plugs and a strong LiPo battery with 3.7 volts and at least 4400 mAh. In addition, I use NeoPixel RGB LED strips with 60 LEDs per meter. Last but not least, I also use a PowerBoost 1000C to fully charge my LiPos. All products I use are from adafruit.com. I also put a link to all of them in the video description. To get an idea of how I put everything together, here is an overall schematic of the core circuit. Scary, right? <coughs> Don't worry, this is actually easier than it looks. The trinket is basically the mini computer that controls the LEDs. The LiPo backpack on top allows me to connect my power supply. And my power supply is a strong LiPo battery with a built-in over voltage, under voltage and over current protection. The first switch turns the circuit on and off and the two additional ones are for changing between different animations. Finally, these connection plugs connect the circuit to the LED strips of my prop or costume. All LED strips I connect to these four plugs will run the same animation, but I also have one separate plug that will make a static light at the same time. For Brigitte's shield, for example, each of the four channels controls one section of the shield and the fifth connection plug gives the eyes and mouth a constant orange light. To create such a circuit, I first separate the connection plugs in the middle, strip the wire ends and connect all plus, minus and data strands to each other. 
Since I want to keep one channel separated though, this data wire will stay by itself. I also add some wires to my switches and connect their minus poles to the ones of the connection plugs. Now the resulting plus and minus strands go to the back of the trinket. The plus of the two animation switches go to the third and fourth pin and the data wires of the connection plugs go to the 5th and 6th pin. Then for the on and off switch to work, I first have to scratch away the connection between these two pins on the backpack and then solder on the wires. Last but not least, the backpack then gets mounted onto the trinket. And this is how the result looks like. I have two switches to change the animation one separate channel to turn some LEDs on constantly, four strands for the animation part and one switch to turn everything on and off. For the power supply I use a LiPo battery as already mentioned. So with this totally not complicated setup I am able to control five strands of LED strips but it surely can also go up even more. Here is also a setup with seven strands for example. It's the circuit from my Nova costume and also the same I used for my Tsinogre costume. Just keep in mind that all of them will do the same animation. They also don't need all to have the same length. But the amount of LEDs shouldn't be too far apart. Now, how many LEDs can you run with this setup? Adafruit recommends not more than 1 ampere as a current draw per cell. With 20 milliamps per LED on maximum brightness, this would be 50 LEDs in total. With a 4400 milliamps per hour LiPo battery with two cells, these LEDs would light up for around 4.4 hours. However, I rarely use white and mostly go with a colored animation, but also barely turn all LEDs on at the same time. So I often use hundreds of LEDs and the circuit still runs fine. If you connect too many though, the LiPo battery will just shut down but nothing gets hot or burns down, so don't worry. Well, and the only way to figure out how long an animation really lasts is basically just to measure the time until a fully charged battery is empty again. For the code I'm using an older version of the strand tests from the Adafruit library. This code offers different animations that are easy to adjust and look great in costumes. If you don't understand how any of this works, please go watch my how to control LED strips video first. My favorite animation is the rainbow cycle. By adjusting the values of red, green and blue here, you can easily get any other color you want. In addition, I combined it with the button sketch from Arduino and added a further LED strip that is separately controlled. So here are pin 5 and 6 to control the LED strips. And pin number 3 and 4 are both of my switches to change the animations. And here you just enter what the LEDs shall do depending on the position of these switches. For my shield I use the red static light an orange static light, a pulsing animation and a crawling animation. Well, and at the end you'll find the code lines for these animations. This is how my pulsing looks like, for example. Also, here is the line that turns my separate LED strips to one static color. See, just like the lights in my shield. If you want to learn more about how to work with this code, simply check out my previous videos or get my animated lights book on kamecosplay.com. Also, if you want to play around with my code setup, you can download the whole thing on my website as well. I've put a link to it in the video description. So once I added my favorite animations to the code, I only have to upload it to my finished circuit and it's done. Now I can connect the plugs of this baby to any costume piece or prop I want. As you can see the back side of my Brigitte shield has 5 plugs. 4 for the main shield and 1 separate for the static skull in the middle. I just have to connect my circuit to these and done. 
For my Tsinogre costume, for example, I had cables that run from one armor piece through the next, and the next, and eventually ended at my right shoulder. There I could finally connect them all to the circuit and hide everything nicely under the pauldron. Not that complicated, right? And that's how it works for pretty much all of my LED projects. I really hope you liked this video and I know there are probably better and cheaper products. There is probably a better circuit and like a better code for this whole thing. But as I mentioned, I'm just a cosplayer, I'm not a professional and I just try to put everything together as good as I can. So if you have any suggestions to improve something, leave me some comments down below. And as always, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of the upcoming content here. Also, you can support us on Patreon and also thanks so much for buying the books. Bye bye. See you soon.